Yeah, thank you, Julie. And good evening, guys. Good evening, members and guests for today's IR some Qatar branch meeting. And finally, yeah, I think after three months, yeah, we are back <laughs> with our meetings. Unfortunately, last three months, we couldn't be able to arrange or coordinate with our meetings. But finally, we are here. And this month onwards, uh, what we have planned is we'll be going through face-to-face -face and hybrid. It will be hybrid section, face-to-face -face and online sections as well. So those members who like to visit, uh, let's have our network section. Please join us for face-to-face -face sessions in upcoming months. Uh, yeah, that's the main thing. And as Julie said, uh, this month what we have been trying is we are trying using go to training session. So each one of us can interact each other. So when the time permits, you can unmute yourself. We can interact. Even we can switch on the cameras, right? Because it's been a long time which we have gone through those process. Because early times when we used to go through Zoom meetings, we used to do that and there was more interaction. So we're missing that. That's the reason we start to plan this. So feel free to switch on your cameras when the time permits, at least at the end of the section, right, Leo? Yeah, yeah we can switch, off the, switch on the camera and we can see each other face to face. <laughs> and yeah, for this meeting, uh, actually I have planned to present a topic but unfortunately i had a small incident at my home and i had a fracture <laughs> so and leo is always there to back up and help me <laughs> on the meeting so he has jumped in so those who are not familiarized with us myself dibu Revi kumar i'm chair of irsm qatar branch and today our presenter is mr leo uh, he is our previous qatar branch chair and now he is our qatar branch ambassador He's our advisor, and we can say a lot about him if we start. He's a fellow member, he's a recognized safety professional, and a lot. So, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Liu uh, to start the presentation regarding risk and safety communication. So, Liu, so the stage is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Deepo. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, Julie and uh to our uh, guests and uh, members uh, it's me once again your former chair and uh, now your branch ambassador uh, working uh, uh, with uh, your organization WRSM. and uh, yes uh, tonight i've been asked by uh, depot to give a talk and uh, we wanted to start the year as our first meeting uh, to talk about something that we can take with us uh, all the year, throughout the year, and uh, something that we can always be, uh, we can make part of our everyday risk and safety practice. And uh, I decided to give or to prepare a talk about uh, risk and safety communication. Uh, this is this is basically some of the principles that we need to apply. So bear with me in the next uh, 45 minutes or so. Uh, you are free to uh, drop some questions or insights. Uh, don't worry, this will not really be a uh, some sort of uh, uh, just me interacting with you, but uh, I'm encouraging you to drop some insights as well. If you find uh, any slide uh, of interest to you and you want to give your insight, please feel free. I'm not just going to ask a question, but uh, I will ask you to interact with me by uh, dropping some insights uh, uh, in, in the slide that you find uh, to be of interest with. So anyway, I, I just want to start with the basic of the risk just to refresh us okay so again since our topic is all about risk and safety communication i'm not going to go again into the details of safety because we all know that uh, we have different uh, uh, views on the definition of uh, safety uh, adding to it of course the context of health but i just want to refresh our memories with uh, um, uh, the word risk and of course when we talk about risk it's basically the uncertainty of outcome whether positive or uh, negative when it's positive we call it an opportunity when it's negative we call it a threat and actions and events so we go back to our basic uh, analysis about risk is the the likelihood of being harm realized but uh, I, I, I've extracted some definitions here from different sources 
and uh, in the definition it's also saying that it is a combination of likelihood and impact including the perceived importance so i derive this from the uh, 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 office of uh, government communication uh, management of risk guidance for practitioners mm -hmm. And of course, also we're so familiar with the International Risk Management Framework, ISO 31000 of 2018, um, the effect of uncertainty on objectives. And here I just want to emphasize the word effect, which is a deviation from the expected. It can be positive, it can be negative or both, and it can address, create or results in opportunities and threats. So when we talk about risk, it is usually expressed in terms of where did it come from, from the sources, and then the potential events and their consequences and their likelihood. So this is all about the uh, uh, re uh, refreshing our memories about risk. And of course, we always were so familiar with this, uh, risk as the chance of something unpleasant happening, such as injury or loss, and therefore something to be avoided. I'm just pausing because of the call to prayer. So maybe some of you are preparing to pray. Let's let, allow me just to pause for a while and uh, we cannot uh, continue until uh, the call to prayer is over. Right. So um, to continue with what we're talking about, just to refresh our memories with the word risk. The reason why I'm trying to emphasize this, if you would, if you if you notice that risk as the chance of something unpleasant happening, such as injury or loss, whether property or whatever, of course we are avoiding to have loss of lives, and therefore something must be avoided. How can we avoid this? Of course, there's a need for us to communicate the risk. There's a need for us to communicate safety to the different stakeholders. Now, when there's another risk and we take a look at it on the other pers perspective or another dimension, we call it as an opportunity. And that's the same thing. We need to communicate opportunities. Why? Because they can be part of our improvement process that can be part of how we can improve our workplace, our system, and in general, the organization where we belong to with. Now, what are the different sources? I've extracted this from the uh, uh, WRSM uh, website, and uh, uh, these are some examples of uh, risk sources, international relations, productivity, robotics, science, security, supply chain, talent, technology, uh, consumer trends, they come in all shapes and sizes. And of course, if you if you go back to the definition of risk, you can really say that all of these elements here that can be considered as sources of, of, of risk, we need to communicate whatever risk we get from these sources, right? Otherwise, if we don't, then we can end up having something really silly or really something bad 
from out of these sources if you don't communicate the risk from out of this. So what are the examples of possible consequences of risk events? We're talking about events like, for example, at the workplace, we can have loss of lives. We can have damage to the physical body, injury. We can have illnesses or diseases. We can lose damage to, we can have loss of or damage to property. And we can, it can also adversely impact the financial aspect of the organization. We can uh, have the loss of livelihood or the potential to earn money. And of course, another thing is the loss of time, the inconvenience. We can damage the environment and we can have the most common thing that we can hear today nowadays is emotional distress leading to mental health issues. These are just examples of possible consequences of risk events and therefore, therefore they need to be communicated. If you want to prevent this from happening, the moment we notice some risk related with the, the, the process that we have in our organization, we need to communicate them. Now, according to WRSM, where risk management matters and so with risk communication, they matter in arts and media, construction, of course, most, most of our members, they work in construction, uh, education. Uh, yesterday, I was in, uh, uh, in one university here where I gave a talk to a group of students and, and hopefully we can bring them in as uh, uh, the first group of students to become student members from the uh, academe. And we also have emergency services. We need to manage uh, um, the entirety of emergency services, energy. Some of you are working in oil and gas. Some of you are working in government. Some of us are working in a healthcare organization, manufacturing, transport, utilities. You have, you have a long list of uh, employment organization, uh, private organization, government organization, where we can have risk and then risk management will matter. And so with risk that we need to communicate internally or externally. Now, I want you to look at this. I, I, I really love to look at this framework. This is, this is the framework of ISO 31000 of 2018. If, 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 you, if you can make yourself familiar with this as a risk and safety practitioner, as a safety practitioner or an OHS professional, if you can make yourself familiar with this, your practice would really be, I can say, uh, you'll have a, a smooth sailing uh, professional practice in risk and safety. Why? Because you will get to see the process, the process in the framework. And the most important thing here, once you get to see the content of this, you'll be able to communicate and consult with other stakeholders the effect of whatever can be seen in the framework. So the entirety of this, the entirety of this framework is actually requiring for us to communicate with the different stakeholders, right? Like, for example, what is the context of your operation? And what comes next after establishing the context of your operation? You need to assess what, what whatever is there and inside. Like if you're in a project, you look at the project, uh, you look at the, the, the four uh, most uh, important elements or factors that governs the project. And you have uh, the financial factor, the uh, 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 quality assurance and quality control factor, you have the uh, time frame factor, and you have the uh, uh, risk and safety factor. You miss one thing and you don't get the square, the square shape of the project. You put something that is not in proportion to the rest of the factors, then you don't get a square. And what, the, what, what does that mean? If you don't get the perfect shape of, 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 of the project square, then something can go wrong. And then if you don't know how to communicate and to consult with those uh, who are responsible or those stakeholders inside the project square, then we have a problem. And of course, the entirety of this, it requires a communication process because the, 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 all the elements, all the elements entailed in here, they need to be communicated between stakeholders. So I really suggest that you make yourselves familiar with the risk management framework. Um, and uh, um, of course, the uh, WARSM uh, has a very good program about uh, training program on uh, managing risk essentials and certificate in uh, risk management. 
um, try and uh, open the website of WRSM and see for yourself the content or the, the syllabus for uh, man managing, managing risk the essentials. Um, I believe it was launched uh, three, two or three years ago. And uh, now uh, more and more people are coming in to take that course because it's, it's really, uh, for me, it has the complete ingredients of understanding uh, risk management, not only the, the, the framework, but we, uh, with the other elements of managing risk in different uh, aspects. So what risk communication is all about? So let's talk about this. Risk communication is a process. It's a process of what? Of providing a concise, straightforward, understandable, and of course, credible information which is needed to make effective decision making with regards to the risk that has been to the risk that have been identified. So always remember, risk communication is a process. And in managing emergencies and responding to incidents, of course, we want to avoid this as, as early as we can. Uh, some of you are already familiar with the uh, 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 INDG uh, 63, Industry Guideline uh, 163, I mean, uh, the five steps to risk assessment. And then once you are familiar with that, you can go into the risk management process and you can talk about the, the, the uh, a simplified version in managing your risk, risk assessment, identification, evaluation, and the, your treatment of risk. We want to do that first. We want to communicate it so we can avoid emergencies and we can avo avoid responding to incidents. All right. So risk communication is generally considered to be providing services to those outside of the incident command system. So the, uh, the incident command system is another interesting topic that maybe one day we can talk about it here. And what's your goal? Your goal is to influence the behavior of the people inside. How do they react to that particular risk that has been discovered, right? So how do they react with regards to the operational element? How do they react if the risk uh, is derived from uh, uh, the people, if the, the, the source of risk is your equipment, if the source of risk is uh, uh, your materials, if you, the source of risk is your environment. So you need to react on this because otherwise, if you don't communicate this risk, you might end up having an emergency and you might need and you really need to respond to that incident and we, do, we don't want this to happen. So in other words, we're slowly getting into the context of risk communication as a proactive process. Okay. Now, I, I, I have here something that, uh, you know, uh, of interest to you when you talk about risk management and risk communication. In, in, in risk assessment, we say inspect, don't expect. Okay, I put that in the framework of risk management within the context of risk assessment. Inspect, don't expect, and report, don't abort. I put that in the context of risk communication. So, you know, I, 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 just, I just make it like, uh, for us to remember that when we as risk assessors, we as risk managers, we expect something, but on the other hand, we need to inspect, don't expect, we, we need to communicate, we don't need to abort. Otherwise, again, as I've said, this might end up into an emergency where we need to respond. Now, um, you're familiar with another terminology, crisis, okay? crisis and risk communication. Uh, th this is just a bit of, of, of that about this uh, uh, particular terminology, which is also familiar to most of you. We talk about crisis communication, which deals with things that do go wrong. Okay. So if we have identified any hazard and the associated risk, what do we do? We communicate that we mitigate the risk why because it can end up as an emergency if emergencies are poorly managed we can end up as a crisis and before we communicate the crisis let's do something let's communicate the risk so that we can be preventive in our process okay so crisis communication deals with the things that do go wrong right because this is now a reactive process but risk communication deals with things that might go wrong okay that might go wrong. So crisis communication is something has already happened. Risk communication is you want to do it in a proactive manner. Okay. And risk communication responds to any event that could cause uh, concern among the public. And of course, that can attract uh, media attention, 
uh, if you don't know how to contain it internally within an organization. And risk communication is also the exchange of information among interested parties about the nature, the magnitude, the significance, or the control of risk. This is according to Covelio in 1992 in his uh, paper in uh, page 359. Now, another thing with risk and communication. Risk can generally be identified, planned for, and dealt with effectively if it does turn to crisis. Okay? But of course, again, again, I want to repeat this. I want to reiterate this. We don't want a hazard that has been discovered in this associated risk to end up as a crisis. So once we have identified the hazard and then the associated risk, we need to communicate this because we need to mitigate this. We need to put control measure. We need to prioritize if there are a number of risks that we have seen Okay, or we, we get to discover, we need to prioritize the treatment of this. Because otherwise, again, it will end up in a crisis. And when we communicate, we communicate in terms of engaging, engaging or involving with those with an interest in our system, in our process. And of course, we need to have a communication plan ready to deal with difficulties. So I have a question here. How many of you are familiar with your risk communication policy if ever you have a risk communication policy and right now if you're thinking that you don't have a risk communication policy i guess i guess it's about time that you think about formulating a risk communication policy right especially if you're if you're in an organization that you have your internal system that before external responders can get into your premise then you have to respond internally Otherwise, this will go outside and you might not be able to control the way people communicating with each, with each other, especially outside of the organization. Okay. Now, um, there are different thinking in risk communication. The risk assessors, what, uh, what, what, do, what, what, what do they do? The risk assessors, they will only look at what and how the hazards look like. This is what they do. They are the frontliners. How can, how can risk take place in a way that will impact the operational elements or the strategic objectives of the organization what are the influences on concerned parties if you have the if you have the, the risk associated with the hazard you've identified what are the influences of this on concerned parties like for example in your organization who are the concerned parties you have a lot you have the contractors you have the visitors okay it's not only the people inside but if you're going to filter it, you have different from different departments, the, the, the people that you serve within your organization, they are your concern, your internal concerned parties, plus those people that also shares with your business organization, then you can have them outside, you, they are your external parties, okay? And the risk assessor will, will say, how does the risk contribute to the business operation? This is how the risk assessors think. Now, with the risk managers, here's the, here's the catch here. If you're a risk manager, how would you explain the impact of risk? Okay? If, if, if there's already a risk and it's imminent that it can, it can adversely impact the uh, different uh, stakeholders or interested parties, how would you explain it to them? And then how would you release your concern? How would you let people know? Now, the, the, the most important thing to remember is when that already happens, when that risk materializes or realizes into an actual eventuality, how would you protect the concerned parties? Okay? Could it, be, could, could it end up into uh, loss of revenue? Could it end up into loss of uh, limbs and lives? Could it end up into environmental damage? And of course, once this happens, how would you bring the normal daily life into a, in, into a normal situation where people will not be afraid? So this is, these are the different roles portrayed by different entities, the risk assessors and the risk managers. And then in between, they have the commonality of understanding what is your risk communication process from two people having different thinking about risk uh, communication. Okay? Any questions so far? I am just trying to look at the uh, other computer here uh, just to find out if there's uh, there are insights or questions. 
No? Nothing, nothing yet. Nothing. Okay, so I, I just want to break the uh, silence because you might be so engrossed with uh, the way I explain things. And <laughs> I, as I've said earlier, please give your insights if you have any insight. Okay? Don't don't be ashamed. This is this this is our learning process. I will also learn from you. Don't only get to learn from me, but I will also be able to learn from you if you give your insight. Right? So moving on, let me just share this video that I, I don't know if this will play. Uh, we will just see. I got this from a friend before. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des größten Wächter. Das Gerät, das Überlebensradar. Mayday, Mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Over. We are sinking. We are sinking. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? All right. I, I, I just hope that you're able to, to, to get something from that communication uh, uh, process, the way, the way the radio operator is communicating with the, 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 the person relaying the message, the way he's pronouncing or the way he's understanding the message. And we, we all know that in, in communication, we need to understand all the different elements of communication. You have the message, you have the messenger, you have the receiver, and then you have the medium on how the message can be delivered. And we will also talk about this as we go along. Okay, so again, let's go back into the con concept of risk communication. So risk communication is about a message that is being conveyed in a possibly in a possibly risky situation okay in a possibly risky situation and like for example you have uh, weather disturbance and this is what we like here in in, in qatar in the place where we are in because uh, every day if you look at the the uh, uh, weather forecast you expect that that the forecast is uh, 95 to 98 percent accurate okay when they say that it's uh, there's 30% chance of rain, expect that there's 30% chance of rain. Not it might have been the entire country, but you know uh, there's rain. And also when there's a, um, a forecast of uh, uh, dusty or dusty weather for the day, you expect that any time of the day there will be dusty weather. So you know it's a message. We you, you look at your phone if you have if you have the. Uh, uh, weather monitoring apps, uh, you can see it in the morning and then you exactly know what to do for the day. Like, of course, if you're going to work outside, you'll know what type of, uh, of uh, material of clothing you're going to wear. Otherwise, you know, you will suffer from uh, uh, the heat of your body being generated against the covering of your skin. And also, we talk about uh, imminent fall incident. Okay, um, road traffic accident. So let, let, let me just pause for a while here. When we communicate risk at the workplace, because I, 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 I miss to, I miss to uh, uh, include here in this slide about hazard identification technique. And I'm going to challenge the audience today. If some of you have known me in the past talking about a hazard identification technique and you can still remember them, then drop them in the chat box and you will see how we can smile with your response. But otherwise, let me talk to you about what we need to communicate and how should we start communicating. First of all, let's find out what kind of hazard identification technique we have in mind. Okay, so I'm going to teach you the uh, acronym ABAYA. Okay, Alpha, Bravo, Bravo, India, Alpha. And, and I, I've discussed this many times in my talk here in uh, uh, RSM Qatar branch. ABAYA stands for when you start your work, always try to remember looking above. Okay? Why? Because there might be something that can cause to uh, have a fall and uh, there's already the uh, uh, um, uh, that moment that anytime something can fall from above and then you miss to discover that as a risk and you miss to communicate that to the stakeholders at the workplace, then you have 
something falling from above, hitting someone and ending up into damage to limbs and lives, limbs or lives, damage to property, damage to environment. And the next one is letter B, which is look below. Look below the walking, working uh, surfaces. Why? Because it's only on the ground that you will see causes of slip, strips, and falls, right? Like, for example, if, if, if there are some things that can, that, that, uh, uh, like uh, cable trailing or maybe spilled uh, oil on the ground, if, if, if you don't get to notice this as risk and you don't mitigate, you don't control, what can possibly happen next? Some, someone can cause, can, someone can, can suffer from a slip and fall. Okay, for trailing cables, someone can trip over, and then these are already risk. These are already uh, imminent risk that you fail to communicate or to control, and you fail to communicate. And then the other one is behind. You have above, below, behind, especially uh, moving equipment. If, if you don't have a navigator with you, or if you don't have a, a back eye with you, then how would you know? that something risky behind the moving equipment uh, can, can, uh, uh, can end up into uh, an unwanted emergency. And then inside, uh, I always say that uh, whenever you're outside, always try to remember checking inside. Anything that has a door, okay, consider it as inside because you, you can never tell that, that there's, it's, it's already a hazard within itself and uh, there's a risk associated with that inside, like, for example, uh, uh, chemicals that are open, and then when you open the door, the fumes will be released by virtue of the oxygen injected into that door, and then back, uh, 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 how do you call that, um, uh, flashing back on you, so you'll have an, uh, uh, an inhalation uh, emergency. And then, in general, look around. Look around 360 degrees. It, it will not cost you your time. Uh, to, uh, to around two or three minutes to apply this uh, very simple technique of looking above, below, behind, inside, and around. So if you're going to read that acronym, it sounds like this, abaya. And in the Middle East, whenever you see an, an Arab woman wearing an abaya, it will remind you of a hazard identification technique, right? So will that be helpful for you? I believe so. Now, what are the challenges when it comes to risk communication? The challenges is, will we be able to provide accurate information, concise information, and direct to the point information? And another challenge is, are we, we, are we not going to alarm individuals and are we not going to cause uproar from these people who might be alerted of the risk? And then how about the way people perceive the risk according to their culture? according to their knowledge and of course according to how do they understand the language that you are using you don't expect that in, in, in the workplace people might, might might be able to easily understand things that you're talking about and if they have not been oriented with that so these are some of the challenges of risk communication now it's really very important for us to communicate the risk regardless of those challenges okay why? Because we need to create an understanding of the nature of risk and the types of risk that the organization may face. So you have, you have a lot of risk. As risk managers, you have a lot of risk. Financial risk, reputational risk, environmental risk, uh, operational risk, a lot of risk. If you are in health and safety and uh, your, your, your job entails you to conduct a risk assessment every day so often, so you have also a lot of risk. Uh, you have risk of fall, uh, risk of people not appearing for work, uh, risk of contractors not complying to policy, so on and so forth. And then you have to set out the role of communication in risk handling enhancement, right? Role of communication in risk handling enhancement. How will you establish this? So again, that will go back to the policy that I was talking about. And it's also important to communicate the risk so that we can explain the role of different players in the overall drive to improve the principles involved. So there's a need for us. Like, for example, you have a contractor, you have a situation in your organization, you need also to, to, to relay this to them so that they will also be able to know what the role as part of your organization. Now, 
According to the World Health Organization, risk communication is the real-time exchange of information, real-time, actual time of the exchange of information, advice and opinions between experts or officials and people who face a threat from a hazard to their survival, whether it, it, it has something to do with health, uh, economic or social well-being. And for us in risk and safety, we always talk about uh, moral obligation, economic obligation, and legal obligation. Okay? And also another definition here is all about building trust. Building trust. Risk communication intervention should be linked to functioning and accessible services. So I want you to capture here the word services in your organization. What kind of services do you think has something to do with your business operation? Be it uh, utilities, okay? When we say utilities, water and electricity, emergency services, those who can provide pre-hospital emergency care, fire emergency providers or services, what else? Um, uh, food services, if in case you need the um, uh, external provider if you have a situation inside your organization. And it has to be transparent. It has to be timely, easy to understand. And it, has, it should be able to acknowledge uncertainties. It should be able to address the affected populations. It should be able to be linked to self-efficacy and could be communicated using multiple platforms, methods, and channels. So uh, uh, there's one slide here that will show us the different platforms, methods, and channels of communicating the risk. Now, there's another one that I've extracted from safetyculture.com, and it's, they are defining risk communication as an interactive process of exchange, exchanging information and opinion among the different people inside, among the groups, and among the, within the institution. And it deals with, of course, the risk, the uncertainty of the event, the consequence, which can possibly, possibly impact the, 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 the uh, operational elements. I, I just don't want to focus on uh, the people, but the, the entire operational elements. And of course, that can also adversely impact the uh, uh, strategic uh, objectives of the organization. So another purpose from uh, uh, also from uh, WHO, um, the purpose of risk communication according to WHO is to help people understand and manage risk. Okay? To help people understand and manage risk. And it involves sending messages about risk itself and risk management to various audiences, such as, of course, the media, the general public, the employees, and the clients. So in our case, let's just think about two groups of people here to help people understand and manage the risk within our organization, which are the employees and the people that we serve within our organization. Like for example, the owner of the project, they are our clients, okay? If, if we have contractors, the contractors may be our service provider and we can be the client. So that, that works vice versa. Now, it is a process. Risk communication is a process. And it's not just a simple process. It's a compl complex process that, that will require us to use different channels and strategies. And nowadays, when we talk about communication, you see, there are only a few people here inside the room, but a lot of people are attending this session. Why is that? Because we have now different channels of relaying the message across where we are right now. So we have the social, we have the... Uh, technology that provides us the, the, the platform of relaying this to you. And, it, and, and nowadays, it's so easy. Of course, there's still a risk. The risk that there will be an interference, there will be a distraction in the uh, 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 connectivity. But of course, we have another option. Like, for example, um, Julie said that uh, we have around 80, uh, 80 people registered, but there are only a few now attending. So what can we do? This is recorded and they can still access to this because of the availability of the platform or the uh, uh, channel of um, relaying the information to other people. So this is just an example of how we communicate with each other and think about this platform that we can use when it comes to communicating the risks. Now, there are barriers in communication, um, and, and, and it's this, these are very common barriers that we can, that we can, we can uh, understand, we can encounter, and I guess you agree with me, such as changes in perception. You know, not all people have the same understanding and uh, 
um, how they perceive things, and it changes every every now and then. Okay, the way people interpret the risk message, it, they, they 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 interpret it in in various ways. Okay, because we always have to remember that in risk and safety pra practices, we have different perspective. The perspective of the one who sees the risk and the perspective of the other person who owns the risk. If you if you don't get to meet midway, then you will have a problem. Because if I'm the one who's, who's seeing the risk, I can say you stop the work because you have a risk. And then here you are, you will say, no, I know we have the risk, but we have control measure. Okay, but the way I'm perceiving it, for me, it's high risk. For you, you may just say, we, we know we've been operating for this number of years, and then this has been happening, and nobody was injured. Yes, but you don't you don't have to be complacent because as the moment as, as the risk is already imminent, then you expect that something can take place at any time, and we need, we need to meet midway so that our 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 perception will become uh, one perception and we need to do something. And also another barrier is differences in receptiveness. How do we how do we receive how, how do we receive the message? Like for example, what's your thought against my thought of the risk that as I mentioned, as I cited the example in the first uh, bullet point, how, how do you how do you receive my thought of telling you that there's a risk we need to stop the work. And for you, you've been working with complacency. You will say, don't worry, it will not affect us. But of course, for me, it's high risk. For you, it could be trivial risk. We need to meet midway because of our differences in, in, in our perception and our differences in our uh, receptiveness. Okay. And also, one barrier also is con that, that's considered is poor or lack of coordination. And in, 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 in managing risk, okay, in, in, in managing risk, we need to think about this. Communication plays first. And then we have coordination. We have cooperation. And we have collaboration, okay? And the last one is command. So we have five Cs when we talk about risk communication. Communication, we need to communicate with each other. We need to coordinate with each other. We need to collaborate. We need to cooperate. And we need someone to give us command. And introduction to information. How do we start? How do we start opening the information that both of us, both parties will be able to understand it clearly so that we can end up into a common denominator of saying, ah, okay, yes, I agree with you. Indeed, we have a risk. And if we don't put control measures in this, then something can go wrong and then we need to communicate this because we need to contain this risk only within our sphere. And the other barrier is social and cultural characteristics. Again, I mentioned this earlier in the previous slide. We have people who have differences in languages. We have people who have different, uh, different uh, religious beliefs. And we also have uh, people who, who came from different countries. We understand, I understand the health and safety law from my country. And now it's been added, my knowledge and understanding has been added with the law of uh, uh, the health and safety law of this country. And all of us, we have different um, background in uh, understanding the law and, of course, religious beliefs that may affect our way of uh, understanding or exercising our um, uh, risks, uh, risk management skills in the workplace. And we need to consider this. Why? Because it shapes, it helps us shape uh, accurate and true messages. So these this five barriers in communication we, we, we need we need to we need to to always take a look at this and then apply it in our workplace in our organization and see how we can come up with um uh, how should i say it how we can come up with solutions that that that, that the risk owner and then the the one who perceives the risk you end up in a common denominator and then we have a mitigated risk and then we can have a very good uh, risk communication process so I have this question that I have typed here. What do you think are considered barriers in risk communication at, the, at your workplace? So, so I, I just want to pause for a while and I want you to ponder on this. If you are in risk and safety practice, 
then try to find out how have you been communicating with your different stakeholders and in your communication with within the people in your organization including all the interested parties what are the barriers that you have discovered you can write them down and tomorrow when you report to your work you can start working with it slowly and uh, maybe you need to talk to your seniors or if you are the senior that you you know you know these things the barriers in risk communication then you can start uh, formulating something and communicate this to the people so that we can have a uh, better risk communication process okay uh, any questions so far no question okay good now um, we all know the um, the uh, PDCA approach okay um, the PDCA, PDCA approach or the, 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 the former PDSA approach, okay, or the other approach in, uh, in, in, in what we're doing, and then you add on to it risk-based thinking, what do we get here? We get a, um, uh, we get a, uh, uh, an enhanced way of, uh, business continuity or, uh, management of risk in our organization so how do we do that first of all establish a communication plan which contains your objectives and processes that are required to deliver results in accordance with your risk management process okay planning is very important as we say it in uh, in uh, um, crisis management uh, failure to plan is planning to fail yes if you don't know how to plan that itself is already planning to fail and then you have to execute it you have to do it you have to implement the risk communication objectives and processes and then while executing or implementing them every so often you need to check and you don't only check once you check and you counter check okay you implement and then you monitor and measure your risk communication process. What are you going to measure? You measure your efficiency. Or in other words, you can use your risk communication process as part of your KPI. Okay? And then finally, you act to continually improve your risk communication performance. So, my friends, if you if, if you look at if you look at this approach, the PDCA approach plus risk risk-based thinking, in other words, the way we think should not be only confined to uh, the premise of like, for example, if you're in health and safety practice, use the risk based process or approach or think way of thinking to risk communication and then establish this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, PDCA process. And then you will have a better or an enhanced risk communication process. Again, plan, do, check and act. So. It's very common, as I mentioned earlier, that when we communicate, we, we consider three very important elements. The message, what would you want the people to know? And then the medium, in what way you would want people to know about the risk. You can use your bulletin board, you can use your uh, the toolbox talk, you can uh, start your day with having a, a pep talk or maybe a, a briefing. And then, of course, you have to consider who are the people who are going to listen to the message. How are they going to receive? How are they going to message to, to, to receive the message? Okay. In this case, the perceived risk may vary radically among the different group of people whom we consider as the receiver of the message. So always remember the message. What would you want the people to know? What's the risk uh, at hand? And then how are you going to deliver it? And who's going to receive it? Are they the people inside or the people outside of your organization or both? So these are the very important elements because you might find you might find also some risk within the message itself, the medium itself, and you might also find the risk among the audience or the receiver of the message. And of course, the critical part of this is how simple your message is. Make it, or otherwise we call it kiss. Keep it straight and simple. Okay. Keep it straight and simple. Kiss. And then, as I've said, you check and you counter check. Check the message. What was the message all about? And then counter check. In other words, message repetition. 
okay? Because the message or information must be, you know, be straightforward. As we've said earlier in the definition, it should be concise. And the reason why you want it to be repeated because you want it to be easily remembered. So these are the critical parts. If you do not know how to simplify your your your, your communication process, such as you know the uncertainty in the workplace or the opportunities, you might miss the chance of gaining something. And instead of gaining something, you may lose something just because your uh, communication process of the risk, which you considered as an opportunity, was not simple. It was so complicated. Okay. Now, I always talk about competence. And when I say competence, I guess you're already familiar with the acronym SCAPE. Okay? And then and this is very common among, among us in, uh, in uh, health and safety practice. So when I talk about competence and risk communication, we need to be conversant. We need to be, um, what they call this, um, uh, non-stagnant. Okay, you don't stop from, from improving your communication skills. What else? And then, of course, the knowledge about risk. Uh, not, not all of the time, risk is negative, which we call threat. There are times that the risk will give us, will give us something that we can gain from, which we call as an opportunity. Like, for example, the pandemic, which we are still experiencing until now, and we're lucky because it's, it's, it's slowing down somehow, what opportunities have we gained from pandemic? So many things, right? We used to to make we, we, we get to make ourselves familiar with the technology. We we get to make ourselves familiar with you know communicating with the people but not seeing them face to face, right? And it it has also improved our relationship with people because even if we do not see them, yet we are able to communicate with them. And then of course the right attitude towards communication that would that would manifest as your behavior the way you understand people the way you understand the the, the the different barriers and how do you mitigate them we call it right attitude towards risk communication as your competence and of course relevant training and as when you talk about relevant training i want to, to you to see one of the things which which uh, when when did i take this i think i took this during the pandemic okay while working at Tacoban Center, if I get a chance to rest, then I sit down and continue with the course which I've started. So it added something on me that has that 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 has enhanced my my communication uh, process. It, it's 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 an, it's a course still available even until now from uh, CDC. It's called Crisis and Emergency Risk Communication Online Training. It's web based, so I encourage you to do the same. Okay. And the good thing is this has uh, uh, ISET uh, continuing education points if you're into uh, uh, CPD scheme. And of course, that will also enhance your, your uh, professional status. And then here, assessment and management experience. This is, this is where a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, health and safety practitioners get challenged, okay? Um, the, the, the experience on risk assessment and the experience on, on risk management. Don't worry about managing the risk if, you're not, if you have not experience in, 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 in assessing the risk. Okay, think about um, improving your skills in risk assessment. You know how will you do that? Once you get to remember the five steps to risk assessment, okay, it will become smooth and easy for you to enter into the risk management framework and then you will all you will know all the the, the 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 contents of the framework and especially the last part which is risk communication and consultation and then so this is all about competence in risk assessment always remember that we use this in a lot of uh, in a lot of areas of our risk and safety practice uh, skills knowledge attitude training uh, experience so how can we become effective in our risk communication okay effective risk communication is all about spreading accurate information informing people of potential hazard and its associated risk and of course its adverse impact and then of course emphasizing concerns of risk so what, what do we mean by this once you get to discover any risk from the hazard you've identified or forget about the hazard 
but in any case that you have your enduring strategic objectives which may be uh, 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 which there's a, 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 a possibility that can be impacted by the risk at hand then you need to emphasize your concern on this and then of course encourage proper risk mitigation but as i've said if you are not competent in assessment in, in 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 management it will be it will be difficult for you to encourage proper risk mitigation so this is this is also another challenge and effective risk communication can improve general risk and safety at the workplace and in the business uh, organization in general so i i'm not going to go through this one by one but i just want you to look to, to look at this the elements of effective risk communication that are that are embedded in these uh, 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 principles of uh, risk communication. So um, you, again, the bottom line is, what's the message? What is contained in the message? How are you going to deliver it? And who are the people who will receive this? Okay, so from gathering of information until working in partnership with the other interested parties, okay? so. Again, um, I will just refresh your memory with uh, the correlation of the stages of risk assessment to risk communication. So it's, it's also the same thing. Identify the risk within the context of risk communication. So what are the risks in the context of risk communication? You have the message, the medium, and then the receiver. And who can be, identi who can be affected by this? Who can be affected by the message that you are relaying? And how can they be affected? Maybe... Uh, it's 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 uh, it's a fake message, okay? Maybe the message contains a uh, fraudulent uh, uh, intention. So you have to evaluate the risk, okay? The risk of communicating the risk itself by what? By its likelihood, and then what can be the consequence to that? And of course, if you get to see the entirety of this, what do you need to do now as your additional risk? communication control measure. So here, I, I, I'm sure you're familiar with double ITS, not just double IRSM, okay? IITS stands for Information, Instruction, Training, and Supervision. And of course, after you've done all of this, review your risk communication process. What are the gaps that we discover, okay? What have we missed within the communication process? As our, as our learning experience, as our lessons learned, so that the next time around we communicate any risk by following the five steps to risk assessment, we will be able to communicate effectively, we will be able to mitigate the risk before we communicate to them, and thereby uh, reducing the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the risk score. So um, I have here also um, five things uh, which I got from uh, uh, Harvard uh, 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 website. This is all about the key steps to develop a risk communication strategy. So the first thing is always try to prepare. Prepare, prepare, and prepare. Why? Because it is important for the audience to know and understand who they are, what they care about, and what their personal situation is. So all, all the the uh, uh, people inside your organization, from the from the uh, uh, cleaners to the people sitting at the boardroom, it's important for them to know what their personal situation is with regards to communication strategy. And of course, we can be measured or we can be judged in the way we communicate the risk, how efficient we are, how effective the way we communicate the risk. In general, how competent are we in communicating the risk once we get to discover a risk? which might uh, adversely impact our business organization. And then, of course, be open-minded about what you know and what you don't know, okay? Here, uh, there's, no, there's no such thing as expert on this area, expert on that area, but of course, we need honesty in this context. And it's, again, it's, it's always important to rehearse, 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 okay? Practice and learn from your experience. And training, as I mentioned earlier, is very important, okay? You, 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 you get to communicate on a daily basis, but try to find out if in your communication between uh, managers and uh, managers, subordinates and subordinates, managers and subordinates, try to find out 
if in case there are contents of the conversation of the communication that falls within the context of risk communication find out how these different people respond particularly when the situation does not get mitigated and it ends up into a crisis and it, it ends up into an emergency okay so when when risks are identified it's very important to find out what's the what's the the, the 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 way the people communicate within your organization and of course talk about training conduct the training to provide opportunities to think about you know careful ways to effectively gather information because we, we, we might be so complacent already that our lives are already very dependent on this without us understanding that sometimes this can harm also our way of running our business, particularly in relaying the information. And let's always try to remember that um, uh, risk communication training seminars, they are very helpful. They can establish groundworks for everyone at the work site at the uh, uh, conference room so so that we can create uh, better workplaces and of course um, we also need to make risk uh, communication inclusive as i mentioned earlier we need to engage everyone okay we need to engage everyone we we, we know the concept of diversity equity and, and inclusion but if you look at risk communication we need to make this inclusive so in other words uh, people at the front line, uh, from, from the front line to the top, uh, we need to be able to include them in the way we establish our risk communication process. So, John Maxwell have said this in his book, everyone communicates, but few connect because of the failure to properly communicate the risk. Okay? Everyone communicates, but few connect. So this is a very interesting book written by uh, one famous uh, leadership uh, uh, guru. His name is John Maxwell. Right. So any question from you? I believe I have I have uh, uh, I have given you what I have planned to give you in the context of the basic principles of risk communication. Uh, Julie Deepu, do we have any question? Any insight from our participants tonight? Yes, we do. The questions came through to me, so I didn't set it up properly. So the first question is, what's the difference between risk and opportunity? Explain with an example, please. Risk and opportunities. Okay. As we've said, risk uh, can, be, can be interpreted depending on the context of the business you are in. Okay. In health and safety, risk is the likelihood or chance that someone can be harmed by the hazard. So before you get to discover the risk, you need to know what's the hazard, what are the hazards. In, in another context, we can define risk as uncertainty. Okay, If it's negative risk, it's called a threat. If it's a positive risk, it's called an opportunity, just like what I have cited as an example earlier, that although the pandemic has brought us so many things, like the loss of lives, on the other hand, there's also opportunity from the risk of pandemic. Okay, So again, don't just look at the word risk itself, but look at two phases of risk as a threat, as, an, as negative risk, and then as an opportunity for positive risk. Okay, I think that's the way we can simplify it without further elaborating on you know, risk and opportunities because risk can be looked at, again, as I've said, in two different ways. Negative risk is a threat, positive risk is an opportunity. Okay, so I would rather use threat and opportunity as positive and negative risk. But on the other hand, you can define risk depending on the context of where you are in, in your practice, okay? Thank you, Leo. And the final question is, what's the difference between risk assessment and risk management? Okay, um, if, 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 I don't know if, uh, um, if I put this in the, medical, in, my, in the medical context, it's just like this, okay? Before you do, be, when a person goes into heart attack, when the heart suddenly stops, okay, that person can go into cardiac arrest, right? And cardiac arrest as defined, total stoppage of the functioning of the heart, okay? If a person is in a status of heart attack, I can do basic life support, 
Okay? I can do first aid, CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. But when that person is already in cardiac arrest, I need to do advanced cardiac life support. Okay? So how do we how do we translate that in our practice, risk assessment and risk management? Risk assessment is what you do at the front line. Risk management is what your manage, managers do on the other hand, on the other line. They manage the risk from the risk you have identified as associated with the hazard. Does that answer the question? I, I think that's the simplest way to do it. A nurse cannot do basic advanced cardiac life support if he has not, if he or she has not gone through basic life support. A risk and safety professional will not be able to manage the risk if he cannot even assess the risk. That's it. <laughs> Great. That was a very good answer. Thank you, Leo. Um, <laughs> that's all the questions. So unless any of your attendees in the room have any questions. Okay, I, I do not know how many attendees are from here in, in, in Qatar. And if you're seeing me this year, uh, let, let our chairman know because this was our project three years ago. Um, but, but this got, uh, uh, what to call this, this, this was stopped because of the, all of a sudden the pandemic uh, came and we were supposed to have this project. Okay, so this is how it looks like in, in the front and this is how it looks like at the back. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we have 35 logged in virtually, plus the people in the room, which is excellent. And it, it's the first hybrid event I've run. So well done for being the first. All right. Uh, so I'll pass you on now to our chairman. If you have any work related issues or discussions, again, as I mentioned, we're always encouraging interaction among us. And especially if you also have insights with the topic that's being discussed here, share with us your opinion so that we will also get to learn from you. Uh, we, we want to, to let you know that whenever someone is speaking in front of you, it's not only, it, it does not mean that I know, uh, I know more things uh, uh, than you, but it's all about us learning from each other. So once again, thank you so much. This is your friend Leo, your former chairman, uh, saying thank you for, for listening to my talk. And uh, rest assured that this material will be available yeah. uh, in the website. Uh, Deepu and Julie will take care of this. Thank you and have a good night. Stay safe. Thank always. you, Leo. <laughs> Thank you Thank for you an Leo. excellent presentation. Yeah, it was an excellent presentation. And if possible, if the members can switch on their camera, if anyone has questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> because after a long time, uh, we have going through this platform where the members can Group switch on their camera. Yeah, we can have a group photo. <laughs> yeah, if everyone can switch on their cameras, if you have a look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a camera with a line through it. Just click that and your camera will turn on. See if everybody's shy or not. <laughs> <laughs> we miss seeing you guys. Yeah. Here we go. Yes. Any more? Okay. So, okay, so oh, Proloy is here. Proloy, how are you? <laughs> we miss you, friend. Cedric is also here. Cedric, you know, the old folks. Uh, we, we really hope that uh, next month, yeah, yeah we can month. have you in the room. Uh, unfortunately, by next month, you will be the one in the room and I will be the one in the computer because I will be leaving next week for my annual division. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, let me take a screenshot. Yeah, great. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for attending today's session. And hopefully, yeah, again, as I said, uh, coming months also, we will be running the same thing, hybrid. If you wish to attend face-to-face, -face, feel free to come over here in the location. Uh, we will have a small chat with some snacks, right? <laughs> <Yeah. Without. laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Julie. Thanks for organizing this. Uh, Thank see you. you. See you next time.